This is a guide on water wheels and tectonica. The guide will be divided into how they work, where to unlock them, and a detailed breakdown of numbers. Timestamps will be provided in the description and comments. Water wheels automate the process of turning cranks. It can be a bit annoying having to turn cranks manually every 5 minutes or so. This makes water wheels incredibly handy to have. To make use of a water wheel, simply build one and place it in any body of water. The water does not have to be moving at all. As long as the game lets you place the water wheel there, it will turn cranks. Having a wide stretch of water will be convenient because you can fit many water wheels in a row. This location, where you unlock water wheels, the river near Terminal Victor, and the body of water near the freight elevator offer great locations to build your power plants. The freight elevator will be a bit far off, so using high voltage cables will make it easier if you have those unlocked. For Mark 1 cranks, one water wheel will turn up to two cranks. If you add more, you will not gain additional power. In fact, you will actually lose a very small bit of power generation and then gain it back as you add more and it cycles. It's a very weird behavior. For Mark 2 cranks, two water wheels will turn only one Mark 2 crank. The same thing will happen as Mark 1 cranks if you don't have enough water wheels or too many cranks added. The reason why you need two water wheels per Mark 2 crank is that Mark 2 cranks generate more than double the power of Mark 1 cranks. You will get a slight boost in power generation while saving a lot of build space in exchange for using more materials. In my opinion, while Mark 2 cranks are way more expensive to build, they are definitely worth it if you like keeping your base tidy as well as generating extra power per water wheel. If you don't mind your base layout, there's nothing wrong with sticking with Mark 1 cranks and going for power that is cheaper to build. As a side note, you don't have to have power floors touching the water wheels themselves by the way. It does look nice to have power blocks surrounding water wheels, but they are completely unnecessary to their function. As to where you can unlock water wheels, they are located at this location on the map. You can scan the water wheels there to unlock the water wheel blueprint. It is located directly north of Terminal Victor. After scanning them, water wheels can be unlocked in the tech tree in the cooling systems tier under Terminal Victor. This is the second tier of tech in Victor and will cost 180 purple research points to unlock. You can tunnel these two routes to have direct access instead of walking all the way around. Just keep in mind to rotate your map to check the elevation levels and dig up or down accordingly. You can dig down by using your pickaxe to create a small hole and then the mole will let you dig downwards. I will show a walkthrough on my path to the water wheels. Also, pardon the mess, I'm in the process of rebuilding my base. The location where you scan the water wheels is very handy to start building your power plant since it already has water wheels placed down and is close enough to Terminal Victor that you can connect the two areas with power floors. Here is a breakdown of the numbers. One water wheel will cost 5 iron frames, 20 mechanical components, and 20 electrical components to build. The raw material cost will be 26 copper ingots and 57 iron ingots. The base build time if you have all the components is 45 seconds for hand crafting. The build time with craft speed 4 is 9 seconds. The base raw build time is 149.5 seconds for hand crafting. The raw build time with craft speed 4 is 29.9 seconds. Water wheels take up 3x2 blocks in dimension and uses 5x4 blocks of space when placed. Water wheel production can be automated via assemblers. The water wheel is threshable and produces 3 iron frames and 9 electrical components when threshed. You can find water wheels in chests at the research lab by jumping down the shaft inside the Excalibur and buried in a small cave to the west of Terminal Victor. Mark 1 cranks generate a base power output of 150 kilowatts per crank. Mark 2 cranks generate a base power output of 800 kilowatts per crank. With Mark 1 cranks, each water wheel will generate a base power output of 300 kilowatts per wheel. With Mark II cranks, each water wheel will generate a base power output of 400 kilowatts per wheel. 
With power M4, output will be increased by 30%. One Mark II assembler will have a base power consumption of 300 kilowatts. You will need two Mark I cranks paired with one water wheel, or one Mark II crank paired with two water wheels to power it. One Mark II mining drill will have a base power consumption of 900 kilowatts. You will need six Mark I cranks paired with three water wheels, or two Mark II cranks paired with four water wheels to power it. One Mark II thresher will have a base power consumption of 1200 kilowatts. You will need eight Mark I cranks paired with four water wheels, or two Mark II cranks paired with four water wheels to power it. This should give you a rough idea of how many cranks and water wheels you will need to power your base, depending on how many Mark II assemblers, drills, and threshers you have set up. A final note, as of this video, monorails still do not work with high voltage cables. If you are using monorails, connect the monorail depots using power floors. If you connect them using high voltage cables, they will not be able to charge up and fail after delivering a few rounds of cargo. Thanks for watching and I hope this guide came in handy. If you need any help or have your own tips, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, hope you guys are staying safe and seen out there. And I'll catch you guys next time.